welcome to our lesson on the reproductive system. This is going to be a combined lesson in which we do a virtual dissection as well as an informational session on the functions of the system. Our goals, well, when we're complete, you should be able to identify each structure on a model, describe the purpose of the reproductive system as a whole, explain how each structure accomplishes those purposes, identify any possible challenges to the system, such as outside challenges, discuss how all of those structures are going to help to maintain that homeostasis, um, and basically we're going to be utilizing BioDigital to, to dissect and label, and our labels are going to include both the name as well as the function of the system as described earlier. The purpose is to reproduce offspring, obviously. Uh, it is the only system that does not become active until puberty, so somewhere around 11 to 16 years old. Uh, the primary organs are the gonads or the ovaries and testes, uh, male and female respectively. The gonads are what's responsible for producing all those gametes or the sex cells. For instance, in males it would be sperm and, and females eggs. And they're also going to be responsible for secreting hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now the accessory organs, they're going to function to deliver the sperm into the female and within the female, that's where fertilization will take place as well as the growth and development of the fetus. This is an image of the male reproductive system. It is a mid-sagittal section, meaning that it has a, been cut uh, in the middle, so down the center of the body, separating the left and the right. And so that way you can see the inside of the bladder, which is that large space above, and also a section of the penis. Our models that we'll be using in BioDigital are not a section. We're only going to be looking at the surface. Now here is a list of all of the organs that we're going to be looking at and labeling. Once you've logged on to BioDigital, you'll go to the Explore tab, then go down to Anatomy by Systems. From here, you want to select the Male Reproductive System. Now you're going to want to go to Edit in Studio tab up above on the left. This is going to allow you to be able to put in some labels. Now so we don't lose any of our work, why don't we go down to the bottom right and let's save our work. Let's call it, you're going to use your last name and then put an underscore and male reproductive system is already there. To begin our dissection and labeling, we want to select the anatomy tab on the top left. This is going to give us the list of organs. In order to see that list, we're going to expand the reproductive system list. And as you can see, we have the external and internal. Click on the external, we'll start there first, and we can see that the uh, structure there is the penis. Click on that as well. So the function of the external uh, reproductive system, or the penis, is essentially for copulation. It's going to help deliver the sperm to the egg. Here is a list of the structures we'll be looking for. Now I want you to note that the prepuce and the urethra, technically we won't be able to see this because the biodigital software uh, will not include the skin, which is technically part of the integumentary system. So I will make a note of that and we will label as best as we can within the model. So I'm just going to position the anatomical model so that way we can visualize all of the structures that we are going to be labeling. The most superficial component is the corpus cavernosum. This is the erectile tissue when, which becomes engorged with blood. Now if you click on that label, you're going to notice on the right hand side of the screen there's going to be an option for you to include a description. You can do that now. Inferior to the corpus cavernosum is the corpus spongiosum. It is a soft tissue that surrounds the urethra and when engorged with blood it can also become erectile tissue just like the cavernosum. And on the proximal end of the Corpus spongiosum is the bulb of the penis. This is going to be the attachment site, as well as where the urethra will enter into the penis from the urinary bladder, which would sit superiorly. An erection occurs when blood moves into the two corpora, creating excess pressure 
against the drainage veins, preventing any blood from flowing back out of the penis. Now this is all under our parasympathetic nervous system control, which basically means that during times of stress, arousal is very difficult to happen. And so oftentimes males who are under a lot of stress due to work or any other situation will actually have a very difficult time having an erection uh, and therefore may have some problems uh, procreating as a result. And at the most distal end of the corpus spongiosum is the glans penis. This is where all of the sensory nerves are located and it is involved in sexual arousal. Also at the distal end covering the glans penis are excess folds of skin known as the prepuce or foreskin. This allows for um, expansion during an erection. Some parents or older men will decide to have that excess fold of skin removed uh, and this is known as a circumcision. And the orifice or the urethral opening is located at the end of the penis which will allow for the elimination of urine and sperm. Here you can see a frontal or a coronal section of the corpus cavernosum uh, superiorly and the urethra being surrounded by the corpus spongiosum on the in inferior portion. And that takes care of the external anatomy. Go over to the left-hand menu bar and expand the internal anatomy list. And all of these structures are involved in the production of sperm. The most superficial layer of the male gonad is the scrotum, which is a skin that encases the testes and helps to regulate the body temperature. Now, sperm are very sensitive to temperature. In fact, normal body temperature is way too warm. So there are sets of muscles that will help with this. The dartus muscle are a thin layer of smooth muscle within the scrotum that will um, cause the skin to wrinkle, thus reducing the surface area and preventing further heat loss. And the cremaster muscle are a uh, long fibrous skeletal muscle that will elevate the testes to bring the testes in closer to the body to keep it warm when it is too cold and then will um, will relax and allow the testes to lower and move the, the sperm away from the warm body temperature when it's way too warm. Let's go ahead and label the testes, which are the male gonads. Within the testes are a set of tubes known as seminiferous tubules, it's the site for sperm production, as well as cells known as Leydig cells or interstitial cells that are responsible for producing the male steroid hormone testosterone responsible for male characteristics. Once complete, the immature non-motile sperm will move posteriorly to the epididymis where it's going to gain its mobility. You can go ahead and label and describe the epididymis. So let me give you a little bit more information about the production of sperm. So as I told you earlier, sperm are produced within the seminiferous tubule uh, of the testes. Here is a, an image of a cross section of that tube and on the basal surface um, are the stem cells very much like the basal surface of our skin and as the uh, cells undergo two sets of division uh, known as meiosis, you end up with four sperm cells for every one parent stem cell. And then that, that sperm cell will move into the lumen or the center of the tube where it'll just get carried and then stored within the epididymis. And while in the epididymis, the sperm will acquire mitochondria, which will be needed for self-propulsion after ejaculation. Ejaculation will cause the sperm to move from the epididymis into the vas deferens, which is a set of tubes that moves the sperm all the way to the urethra for expulsion. The remaining components of the male duct system is the ductus deferens, uh, which we just discussed, as well as the ampulla, which is the end, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, the ejaculatory duct, and then followed by the urethra. So if we follow the vas deferens all the way up and around to the back, uh, we'll find sort of a, a somewhat thicker part of a tube. This is the ampulla. And so this is where the sperm will uh, be deposited here. 
Now this is where the sperm is going to meet the fluid component known as the semen. There are three glands involved in that and they're basically going to be providing some of the nutrients and also help defend itself against any uh, microbes or um, in environmental conditions that are harmful to sperm. The seminal vesicle is a bulbous like gland that will join with the ampulla, so it's pretty close. So let's go ahead and label and describe that. The components of the semen within the seminal vesicle have several functions. One, I talked about the nutrients, so that's going to come from fructose, which is a sugar. The ascorbic acid is going to contribute to the odor. The prostaglandins, these are proteins, hormone-like proteins, that will stimulate uterine contraction, so it's going to be a little helper for the sperm to get to the egg. It's also going to decrease this mucus that's inside of the vagina. So the... Um, the mucus actually helps prevent bacteria from going up into the uterus. We certainly don't want any bacteria there that could kill not only the female, but also a growing uh, fetus. Another defense mechanism within the female reproductive system uh, is an acidic environment which kills bacteria. So the semen will help to neutralize that in order to protect the sperm, which again, it is pretty sensitive to those harsh environments. The next semen producing structure is called the prostate gland. It's about the size of a walnut and, and it sits just below the urinary bladder. The urethra that leaves the urinary bladder will move inferiorly through the prostate gland where it will collect the semen component which is composed of milky fluid containing a citrate which is a nutrient uh, as well as these PSAs or prostate specific antigens that will activate the mitochondria within the sperm. Some medical concerns to be aware of is the hyperactivity of the prostate gland which could cause prostatitis or inflammation of the prostate gland. Uh, prostate cancer is also third most prevalent cancer in males so this is something that would be routinely checked in males once they reach a certain age. Typically males once they hit 50 will have this as a routine checkup as part of their physical. Now the last of the semen producing glands is known as the bulbourethral gland. So it's going to sit inferior to the prostate and and superior to the bulb of the penis. So they're really small, those two little glands there. The bulbourethral gland, also known as the Cowper's gland, is going to produce a thick, clear mucus prior to ejaculation. Sometimes it's also known as pre-drip. And remember, it's going to share the urethra along with the urine expelled from the bladder. And so what that, that uh, pre-ejaculate will do is neutralize any acid uh, remaining from the urine traces. Now the last structure to find is the ejaculatory duct. It's a little bit challenging because it is within the prostate. So we're going to have to hide the prostate gland here in order to be able to see it. Now if you follow the ampulla down, that is the ejaculatory duct. So this is going to be where the semen from the prostate gland as well as from the seminal vesicle are going to join with the sperm that expels from the ampulla or the end of the vas deferens. Now once you have all of the descriptions along with your labels, you can try to organize all of the labels neatly so you can get everything in one screenshot. So you can see how I'm trying to organize it a little bit here. Um, so you can kind of play with that a little bit and just make sure that everything can be seen. The last thing I would like for you to do is to create another label on the vase deferens up above away from all the other busyness. You're going to label it with your name, so whatever your name is, and then an underscore and male anatomy. Be sure to take a screenshot of your completed work and don't forget to save it when you're done.